Hi, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org, here with SiliconANGLE TV's continuous coverage from VMworld Live 2011 in Las Vegas, talking about networking today. And joining me is Sujal Das from Broadcom and Jason Nash from Vero. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank so, you, uh, the, you know, the, the, we're not on the main stage for theCUBE, but the, the Cube is really ki kind of uh, where we bring the smart nodes in to really share our information out there with the broader community. So, um, bringing you guys in, you know, we, we brought the Cube together. So, um, going to talk about really the intersections of networking and, and virtualization. Um, so, just, just to tee it up, last year uh, when I came to VMworld, um, you know, VMware came out with this really just broad vision of uh, how VMware really saw networking changing. And, and and it, it seemed as if VMware might be um, expanding even deeper into the in, into the networking space. And, and to be honest, I heard a lot of negative feedback from some of the ecosystem that maybe VMware was overstretching its bounds. Um, and what I've seen is a little bit of a refocus. And we heard some exciting things uh, from VMware this uh, week, uh, specifically the VXLAN topics. So um, we've got a lot to talk about in the networking space and VMware. You know, uh, you know, it's, it's not just server virtualization, but the networking guys. There's a bunch of them that come here. So, uh, I guess to start this off, if I, if I could ask each of you just to give a little bit of background uh, on you know, your networking background and you know, your history with VMware in networking. So, Sujal, you want to kick that off for us? Sure, uh, Stu, thank you. Uh, Jason, uh, good to be with you thank today. You. Um, so again, my name is Sujal Das. I'm a prog line director at Broadcom. Uh, I've been in the semiconductor networking field for almost 15 years now. Yeah. Uh, having worked at uh, AMD when AMD used to do a lot of networking uh, a while ago. Uh, also worked at Marvell Semiconductor, uh, Greenfield Networks that was acquired by Cisco. And then spent a lot of time at Mellanox Technologies, uh, which is a data center HPC company that uh, uh, has a high performance uh, gear uh, for the industry. And then I've been at Broadcom uh, for uh, over a year now. Great, and, and, and from a virtualization standpoint? Absolutely, so I've been working with VMware for uh, almost six years now. Yeah. Um, uh, starting from uh, the days of uh, NetQ um, uh, to, uh, you know, there's been discussions about support for SRIOV, yep. mm -hmm. um, and, and now uh, most recently VXLAN. So I've been uh, with uh, working with the VMware team for a long time, uh, both on the controller on the NIC side as well as on the switch side. Um, been uh, through the the evolution of the 1000 V architecture with uh, and then uh, being a semiconductor company we uh, we at Broadcom also look at uh, adding value uh, in this ecosystem because a lot of the other uh, OEMs um, uh, use our products so they all want to add value in the VMware ecosystem so we closely follow what the industry is doing in the space and add value yeah, to it. So, 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 I definitely want to touch on the merchant silicon aspect in, in a little bit. Let's, let's let Jason sure. uh, talk a little bit about uh, you know, your, your role. And uh, you, you've been at VMworld uh, for a while. You're actually doing three sessions here, I, I right. believe, at the event. So That's give right. us a little bit of your background. So my background is basically I've been more on the customer administrative side for, uh, for many years, uh, kind of as a Cisco admin years ago, uh, working with VMware for probably the last six years. Uh, I work for a partner based out of Southeast. I'm the data center principal for Vero, so I cover a lot of our Cisco data center networking, uh, UCS focus, as well as vSphere and any of the vSphere products. So my, you know, my vision is from what the customers want and the solutions we design. So I see a lot of the products and the emerging technology. So over the last few years, it's been a lot of the 1000V and distributed switching, which is what I'm doing the sessions on this week. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of my focus and what we do is putting some of these things into play and into production to help solve problems. All right, so, so, so Jason, with vSphere 5 being announced and some of the other announcements, um, it, it, networking was k kind of, uh, you know, n not a major focus, but are there any right. high points you, you think we should be uh, looking at from a... Uh, yeah, I mean, VXLAN's one I want to talk about because yep. it solves a big customer need that we have right now, which is disparate data centers in a lot of cases and disparate networks. But vSphere 5 added a bunch of things to the vSphere distributed switch. I mean, they enhanced things like port mirroring, NetFlow, um, uh, other things that, you know, kind of close that gap with the 1000V for some customers. There's yep. still a big thing, you know, a lot of requirements that have to be met by the 1000V, but that gap for many people is closing for what I would consider to be a simpler, easier to manage switch. And so we're getting a lot of good feedback from that. Uh, I don't know, honestly, how Cisco feels about that, but I know the customers seem to be 
fair, fairly happy. Yeah, no, that. so so if, if I can just comment on that, Jason. So, I mean, I, I spent for, for years been talking to not only Cisco, but all the other networking mm -hmm. companies. And what was interesting is, of course, you know, we understand that the 1000V allowed me to have my network administrator manage not only my physical switches, but my virtual switch right. from the same management. And, and that was a compelling use case, but none of the other networking companies really wanted to go down that path. Right. And the, the belief was that uh, the, the native networking would, would get, uh, the, the virtual networking would get good enough, and that uh, we really wanted to kind of have that segmentation. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of lead me to the next point is to, right, you know, how important is VMware in the networking space and how much, you know, where, where does the intelligence live? Um, so, you know, it can be embedded. There's the silicon uh, companies like Broadcom and Marvell uh, and... Uh, Gosh, uh, Intel just bought Fulcrum Micro. Right. It was the third one I was, I was searching for. Mm -hmm. in my, and, um, you know, differentiation in the marketplace uh, in virtual environments and merchant silicon. So, it, as I said, really big topic. Um, but, um, you know, in the networking space, it's kind of exciting. There's a lot lot going on there. So, um, I, I guess, yeah, Sujal, if, if it, it's... I, mentioned a lot of different things there and I apologize sure. for that but sure. um, maybe we can start with you know from uh, your, your company be, be creating that silicon um, you know how do you guys balance working with VMware and working with you know your OEMs and, and how do we still have differentiated pro products in the marketplace sure uh, g great question um, even though there was a lot of a uh, lot of uh, background there, uh, yeah. it's it's a great question, by the way. I mean, I, I commend you for putting all of that together. So, uh, 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 so I'll shorten quickly. it down to a tweet when we uh, <laughs> when, when we finish the conversation. So, so unlike uh, a Cisco kind of a, a scenario where you know you could create a vertical solution, right, with 1000V and and create a complete solution for the end user, as a merchant silicon vendor, you know, you uh, you almost always have to create a platform that other OEMs can innovate on and, and they can add value with someone like VMware, for example. So uh, what we have seen is, you know, at the high level, two trends. Um, one is, as you mentioned, um, Stu, uh, there is the, the, uh, the desire to, to manage the vSwitch in a switch-centric way. You know, so the, the notion is that, okay, uh, the switch administrator, network administrator has been managing switches and therefore he or she should be managing the vSwitch. And that's kind of like the the uh, the uh, focus from from the 1000 V side and even other vendors, you know, like the companies like BNT acquired by IBM or Arista, have added value uh, in VMware to enable uh, a switch-like uh, management uh, 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 environment for the V switch also, right? So that's one direction, and and we have you know requests from OEMs to enable uh, that, which means uh, to enable. Uh, what is called VM aware switching. Uh, so that's where you need to uh, be able to support things like virtual switch ports. So just like you support physical ports in a switch, uh, you need to support virtual switch ports, you need to support resources for virtual switch ports, such as counters, you know, be able to support queues per virtual switch port, so that now you can essentially uh, do switching for the VMs in a physical switch as well as you can do in a vSwitch. And those are the features uh, we are asked to implement in a semiconductor. And we do that based on standards. You know, there's VEPA uh, that defines uh, how you do virtual switch ports, et cetera. So that's one direction, satisfying the community that wants to manage the vSwitch like a switch. Then there's the server-centric view, which is, uh, you know, where the notion is that, okay, VMs are like servers. Uh, the vSwitch is really a domain of the VMs, and the vSwitch should be managed like a server. Uh, Recently, most recently, there is the notion of uh, software-defined networks, uh, and then also VMware and a lot of other companies, um, especially in the open source community, uh, such as uh, OpenStack, OpenFlow, and others, have brought in this notion where they're saying that, okay, we need to separate the, the virtual network from the physical network uh, completely. Just like it happened in the uh, compute world, where the VMs are completely uh, detached from the physical CPU and the memory. So now uh, the, the thinking is that VMs and anything to do with networking for VMs should be completely detached from the physical network, which is the notion of overlays or what VXLAN, which is essentially is like tunneling uh, uh, over a physical network to enable that, that detachment. So that's kind of like the new trend. So, so we are, we are, you know, we have to support both modes, yep. and we add support in our switches to enable both. Okay, great. 
long answer. Jason, but hopefully I answer you know, it. I've got a follow-up question for you, but if you want to comment on that, yeah, please. Yeah, I mean, uh, just real quick, you know, everything you said is right. So we see this kind of balance. Uh, after the session today, I had someone, a uh, large enterprise, come up and say, you know, we have the 1000D, it's great, but I feel like I'm managing a switch here, and then the physical switches, and I'm doing a bunch of things. Why can't my physical switches extend down into the virtual environment and let me manage it just like physical ports? You know, why do I feel like I'm doing this in two places? Right. So we're starting to see that where people are like, great, this is great, but I really just want to do it from one place. And so that's where I think things really need to head and give the administrators and network administrators that single point. Because right now it's very split. Even when it's not split, it's, it's still very murky. And that, that's been a real problem for a lot of people we deal with. All right. So, so uh, while, while we're on the point, um, you know, network administrators and VMware administrators. Right. So uh, listen to the keynote this morning. And, right. of course, we're talking about cloud. Uh, I believe if I quote Paul Rich correctly, uh, infrastructure is, you know, uh, did he say boring or just, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, so um, having focused mostly on infrastructure for most of my career Same. and dealing with storage admins and network admins, uh, I'm all for smashing the silo and helping make things better, but um, you know, what are the network admins saying about this vision? Are people fearful? Are they interested? No. And that's a great question. So I've yeah. been to Cisco Live for the last several years. Yep. And the first year, three or four years ago, I was the only VMware guy in the building. I mean, yep. It was just network stuff and me. And then you know, last month I was right out here uh, at Cisco Live again, and it's a completely different world. They're starting to understand it. They're starting to get that they need to understand it and they're starting to see tools and the capabilities and new protocols, VXLAN, OTV, Lisp, things like that, yep. that can help solve these problems. So uh, just as storage administrators have finally started really diving in and understanding storage in a virtual environment, the network guys are behind them. They're not yeah, at the same but, level but, yet. But, but, but we, we still need architects. I mean, yes. you know, oh, for, for network we need architects and when stuff breaks, somebody's got to be able to fix it. That's, that's you, right. know, it you know, I'm, I'm all for the trend of the IT generalist, but at the end of the day, yes. you know, when something breaks, somebody be able to got to and it's get not in there. Simpler. I mean, as we yeah. float VMs all over the place, that that makes applications better, makes workflow better, but it doesn't simplify things when I go to, you know, troubleshoot a problem or figure out why why something's happening. Okay. Great. So um, maybe uh, we, we, we touched on uh, on VXLAN a little bit. You know, what is it? Um, it looks uh, like we're taking layer two. Um, it's kind of the layer two, layer three boundary, uh, specifically for things like vMotion. Um, Sujal, it's kind of new. It sounds like you know a little bit about it. Uh, can sure. you tell me uh, Tell me what you know? Sure, <laughs> sure. Um, I invite you to both of you guys to come uh, and see the demo in our booth. Um, it'll give you a kind of a hands-on experience of what uh, VXLAN is. Uh, but uh, at, in, in a very simple term, I think a lot of uh, people are familiar with Cisco's uh, OTV. Uh, they, uh, it was a significant innovation in the area of enabling uh, vMotion across data centers. Um, however, uh, the OTV uh, was implemented at the core layer, so it was implemented, for example, in the, right. in the Nexus 7000 mm -hmm. layer. Uh, the trend is uh, something that uh, we're seeing with VXLAN as well as with other technologies that are uh, starting to become uh, uh, not popular but available or visible in the industry is is to enable uh, OTV like what is it's OTV essentially is a tunnel. You create a layer two tunnel over a layer three network, mm -hmm. and and by creating the layer two tunnel, you you you. Um, uh, give the impression of a flat, li flat layer two domain so that v VMs that work off layer two addresses can move around right. very freely across data centers. Uh, without that, VMs can move around within a data center, which is a single flat layer two domain. Uh, OTV, with VXLAN, OTV, the, the values of OTV are brought down to the vSwitch level all the way to the vSwitch level. So that opens up some very interesting uh, opportunities. Uh, one is uh, what I just mentioned, you know, the ability to now actually provision the networking for VMs completely se separate from the physical switches. Mm -hmm. So unlike the OTV scenario where the tunnels were created in the, in the uh, core layer or the Nexus 7000 layer, and the VM aware switching was still happening in the physical switches, you know, with technologies like VNTAC from Cisco, for example. Uh, now that the tunnels are, are, are initiated right at the vSwitch, uh, the, switch, the physical switches uh, are no longer required to participate in the VM uh, world, so to say. Right? So, so it creates a nice uh, separation of the, of the physical switches from the virtual network. 
So that's, uh, that's a, uh, uh, I think, a great advantage to uh, VXLAN mm -hmm. uh, and these overlays technologies that are being initiated from switches. Uh, there are some challenges to it. There are some scale scaling uh, challenges uh, to, to initiating and terminating tunnels uh, in a vSwitch in the software. Uh, I think these will have to be resolved by the industry as we go forward. Um, there is also the, the uh, need for bridging to uh, non uh, VXLAN environments. Right. Uh, for example, appliances, storage appliances, or firewalls could be, or even a non-VMware environment you need to be able to speak to or talk to. So there needs to be that uh, that bridging from a VXLAN environment to a non-VXLAN. Right. So, so, so these are uh, all technologies that needs to be resolved. Right. So, so it's my understanding that this has just been submitted to ITF as a draft? Um, I saw it last week when yeah. it was submitted. So, so um, it, that means, you know, we're looking for, it's going to be a little bit of time before this is, you know, yeah. you know standard is adopted, but good to see uh, VMware stepping up. Uh, I think one of the things we've been talking about is uh, some of these, you know, boundaries between the, the virtual and physical uh, layer, such as uh, VEPA and that virtual bridging. Um, VMware and Microsoft have really kind of stepped away for that for the most mm -hmm. part, and until they're really fully engaged, I don't think we're going to solve these problems. So, um, gentlemen, I really appreciate uh, you, you joining this. Uh, you know, Jason, uh, give you a last chance to, you know, um, you know, you, I think you've, you've been talking to a lot of the end users, you know, right. give us a final word on, you know, what, what, where do the users really see VMware fitting into this networking environment um, and, uh, you know, how, how are they being, uh, you know, embraced on that? Uh, I think it's good. I think things like VXLAN, we, we're really getting hit with customers wanting to do this cloud you know, really do a cloud, not just talk about it, splitting data centers, moving workloads. Uh, OTB was great, but it required expensive switches. Uh, Lisp is great, but it's fairly complicated. Yep. VXLAN, I think, is going to take off for this reason. So I think a lot of people are going to be excited. I think it really opens the door for this utopian VM mobility that we've all been waiting for. And it's nice to see it in more of an open standard than, than honestly well, saying Well, TV. Jason, I, I can't think of a better way to end this. So uh, Jason and, and Sujal, thank, thank you for you. joining us. This is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org with our continuous coverage from VMworld 2011 uh, talking about the utopian future of